Hello and welcome to, to my little fashion corner. It's a different corner today, you know, different video, different corner type of deal. First and foremost, glasses. I'm not I'm not trying to look smart or appear smart. I my contact lens scratched my cornea, so I had to take them off and put on uh, glasses on and it somehow occurred to me that it would be a fantastic idea just making a video so that the entire internet could see this. There's been a lot on my mind regarding the topics that you've probably seen in the thumbnail slash the name of the video. And I realised that um, I just wanted to talk to you about it a little bit. There's a ton of fashion YouTubers that are talking about, you know, the best purchases for 2023, the worst purchases of 2022, etc. Um, and I don't have really much to add at this moment, but this topic was something that struck me as as actually quite important and I didn't realize how important until until it hit me. <laughs> so today there is actually an unboxing happening. I thought about whether I can just do the story time or whatever separately and then do the unboxing at the end, but it's not really... Like, I feel like I'm gonna be very fidgety talking about these topics, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna do i'm gonna unpack as we go um but what i am going to do is i'm gonna record just the unboxing as it is like i'm gonna open the stuff on camera separately and i'm gonna put the timestamp below so if you just want to see packaging the thing and don't want to endure this yapping about all the things um you're more than welcome to skip to the time that is somewhere on the screen made notes but i've realized that I realized that this topic is quite important to me and I don't want this to appear scripted so I'm realizing I'm stalling a little bit so let's get into it. First and foremost I am going to be talking about you know anxiety, depression and sobriety but I don't want to go into anything that is of gruesome detail or is just uncomfortable. I want to approach this from the healing perspective uh, but I do understand that it might be triggering. If that happens please do tap out, um, put yourself first, take care of you. I'll be here just you know with another silly fashion video later it's fine. Um, so first um, not first, second. <laughs> Secondly, let's talk about perfumes in general. I'm not any type of perfume connoisseur. Is that a thing? Let's make it a thing. Um, I own one, two, three, four. Four perfumes plus one, because it's my kiddos and I actually quite love it. <laughs> but um, four plus one and then plus one that is new one that we're going to be talking about today. I officially have the same amount of handbags as perfumes. One thing that people often don't realize is that perfumes age. When they sit, they age and they may change their tones. They may change their scent. Oftentimes when I talk to peeps and we do talk about perfumes, they go, yeah, it kind of smells like different now. And I've had it for like two years and I'm like, yeah, wow. <laughs> just when you're shopping for perfumes, just bear that in mind that if you already have a bunch of perfumes and you are eyeing out a new one, might be the time to just, you know, declutter. Just get rid of those that you're not really wearing. And yeah, that's it. Declutter. Perfect timing. Pre-spring spring cleaning. Let's do that. I'm going to talk about my four plus one perfumes and then going to move to the new one. Long comb. I've got two Lancome uh, perfumes. When it comes to perfumes, I always recommend starting with Lancome because they're one of the... their perfume house is incredible. They've got a lot of experience when it comes to perfumes. So Lancome, Guerlain... Dior is currently doing a lot with perfumes, but it's not like a classic perfume house. Um, so there is a lot of happening on the perfume scene. But yeah, Lancome is a house that I'm always happy to recommend to others. This one is um, Idol Aura, I think. I've got it end of last year, I believe. I was looking at the La Via Belle. Uh, it was advertised with Julia Roberts. This one, I have no idea who advertised it. I have no idea, like I've got nothing. I just went to Sephora. I went to Sephora. I really liked how it looked and smelled. And yeah, it went home with me. It's sort of an interesting smell. It's on the sweeter side. It's not very florally, I mean, I wouldn't say. And it's aging quite nicely. It's getting de depth to it. But um, overall, it's not changing much. 
is just uh, I feel like it, it it's gotten less sweet, but the intensity um, I feel like it stays. And this is Eau de Parfum. Um, so yeah, Idol Aura. Number two, Lancome. Uh, I don't use this perfume that much. Um, it's very specific. It's called L'Autre Oud. Again, Eau de Parfum. This is, um, this is quite... I've got this perfume quite a while ago and it, they have since changed the packaging and the everything. The design. That's the word I'm looking for. So it looks a bit different when you're going for it now. This is how it looked when I was getting it. It's got like a beautiful golden window design. Maison Lancôme. And the bottle looks exactly the same. Again, it's this gorgeous golden bottle. What a mess in Lancôme. Come on. All right. Um, and this one, if you don't know Oud, Oud is this heavy scent often used in Middle Eastern perfumes or those inspired, often paired with amber, with other wooden tones, those heavy, heavy, heavy perfumes uh, are often um, made with Oud. And this one is absolutely brilliant. It's for either autumn, winter, or just like a very fancy dinner, or a fancy dinner is definitely definitely the event that i would recommend this one for that was lancome now moving on to classics of the classics when it comes to perfumes chanel i am not a fan of chanel number no. five uh, not even a little bit um i've got coco mademoiselle however this one is the lo privé i love this one i absolutely adore this one the Lancome Idol and this one would be my work perfume or just like every day no matter what the season is, what the weather is or event, whether I'm going just for cash dinner, for lunch with colleagues or even like, you know, to the office, God forbid. The smell is very light. It's a combination of florally and sweet but it's got this very vibrant kick to it and I strongly recommend checking it out. Not just the classic Coco Mademoiselle, but the, the low privé as well. The flacon is quite um, classical, classic Chanel. But the scent is definitely something that I, um, I didn't even grow to love. I just really liked it from the beginning. So, Chanel. And the last perfume of mine is something that I go recommend. Well, actually, no. Uh, so I was recommended to stop by Louis Vuitton and check out, oh my goodness, the green one. <laughs> and I went down to the boutique and we tried a couple of those and I didn't really like the green one. Um, but I came home with, with this one, Louis Vuitton uh, Afternoon Swim. It comes in this cute box. As you can see, I'm running out. Is this um, classic Louis Vuitton flacon? Um, you can have it engraved, as you can see. And of course, I'm that kind of person. This perfume is absolutely brilliant. It's very fresh, very light, very summery. It genuinely smells like an afternoon swim. It's so good. Fantastic thing about Louis Vuitton perfumes, you can bring them back to the boutique and they will refill them for you so you don't have to get new and new one, you know, love me a little eco touch and I am super happy with this one as you can see I got it last summer, I wear it almost all the time, it actually does lift up my spirits, yeah. so that's number four, Louis Vuitton afternoon swim. Our special guest, Gucci. Gucci, I'm trying to make you see, Gucci Flora. This is the um, gorgeous Gardenia edition. We got this one in Italy. If you know my yellow work bag, we got this perfume in the same boutique. I'm not a huge fan of sweet or florally perfumes, but this one, this is a gorgeous scent. It's very, very Gardenia, very light. It's not heavy. It ages very well. 
it, it just developed that depth and it's really just growing quite nicely the intensity stays it's just it's a lovely perfume but we've had this one for a while now that i think about it that was my current collection of perfumes and now we're gonna move on to the new one new the new kid on the block i i had a chat with my friend and we were talking about price increases of course because it's that time of the year how house of dior is planning to increase the prices of their perfumes like they're not expensive per se but they're also not cheap so we were kind of chatting about that how that makes us feel and whether we should stock up on perfumes and now i'm kind of going to talk about i'm going to bring out my sappy story i reckon maybe not that sappy all right you'll be the judge of that that made me think about the two perfumes um, that I really like when it comes to Dior. Well, three actually. One is Sauvage and I'm absolutely obsessed with that perfume. And it's just a matter of time, I reckon. <laughs> I'm trying to convince everyone I know to get that perfume, but so far, no luck. I'm happy to befriend anyone who has that perfume. So if you do have that perfume, please, can we be friends? Thank you. Um, there are two perfumes that I really like. Number one is J'adore um, and the other one is Miss Dior. Neither of those perfumes are new. I think J'adore, J'adore had a little redesign or maybe revamp moment. I'm not entirely sure because I wasn't really focusing on those two perfumes. And that's because I have tied both of those perfumes to people that I'm not entirely friendly with. I'm not on fantastic term with and I don't really want to uh, and i just like can't have those people in my life i have actually gifted Shador to someone as a gesture of hey can we can we mend the relationship can we do something about this because this is kind of shitty and that didn't work out very well i hope it wasn't because of the perfume because that person really wanted that perfume so that was one and miss dior a different person had this perfume and both these perfumes would remind me of those people whenever i would see the advertisement walk past those perfumes you know at the airport or just like in the store or something like that th there was always this bitter moment of like oh i would i actually like this perfume both of them and i would love to have it but i can't because it's not because i don't want to have that energy in my life if that makes any sense there was a lot of anxiety and sadness definitely around that although it might sound very silly and I recognize that being sad about not being able to buy a perfume so as we chatted about that I saw some advertisement for the for the new revamped um, Misty or for the new version which brought me to a discussion that I had with a friend about how you should never underestimate the power of joy and I felt like I should probably practice what I preach because I said, look, if you're telling me that you're struggling and you've got this little thing for you and even though you don't necessarily need it, it brings you so much joy and it makes you happier and it gives you energy to do the things, to tackle the tasks, then it's fantastic, it's great. And, you, and you know, I'll always support that. I was thinking about how I am not practicing what I preach actually. It's post Christmas, beginning of the new year. People are sort of reflecting, re-evaluating, setting new goals, etc. You know, I've I'm very grateful for what I have. Oh, this is where my my randomly crying eye comes very handy because you can't really tell whether I'm crying or not. Um I'm very grateful for what I have and I feel like I'm super sad for just everyday life. And how how this ties back to perfume you say? Well, I was reflecting on what are my goals for the next year and really what, what are my goals. You know, being 30-something years young, it makes you sometimes think about what am I doing with my life? And I would oftentimes have that thought and really feel like I'm not really doing anything with my life. You know, I go to work. I um, try to parent my kid as best as I can. We go on adventures. I have scored some really amazing friends for which I'm forever grateful and I do the you know the everyday person thing I've got the spiel nailed down pretty much so I've got that going on but then also I've got a few things that I'm planning and I'm trying to achieve I don't often feel like I'm being productive in a way that I would like to be or 
you know, comparison being the killer of everything or joy or whatever. I genuinely, uh, I, I just look around and feel like I should maybe push myself a little bit more and forget that not everyone has to battle their own head every day. Not everyone comes from the same background. Not everyone has the same resources. So people are in different circumstances and just tackle the day in a different way than I do and it's okay just because I'm not necessarily aspiring to be on the cover of Vogue, Forbes or Vanity Fair doesn't mean that I'm not being productive in my own way just that does not mean that I'm not smashing my own goals and even I should recognize that whatever I am doing is actually quite a bit even though that I would like to see myself pushing for more now this was a very long way to say that it's okay to be anxious about the most mundane things I reckon and it's fine it's really it really is okay with with that I remember something that I've heard from from people from a community that I'm a part of because I've been sober for some time now because I remember like it was yesterday when I did go sober for the first time that was May 2018 um that was for the first time and then six months later well yeah six months later I relapsed for the first time and so far the last time I've stayed sober I still remember that like it was yesterday and it sort of never goes away and I don't really and I forget to celebrate that it's a thing that I battle on daily basis and just because it's something that I went through or I am going through and other people might not necessarily know what that is like. That doesn't mean that it's not a win. I'm not crying, this is just the eye randomly going off. Or I might be crying a little. Um, and that thought, or these thoughts, brought me to really reflecting on what my day to day is and what is really what I'm recognizing as a success and what I'm beating myself over and what I sort of punish myself for without even knowing that I'm doing that and I realized that the perfumes that was actually me really subconsciously battling something that I wasn't wasn't really aware that was there and then one day um, I woke up and I remember because I was tidying up the apartment and I was listening to Not The Good Girls episode about Rachel Hollis because I wanted to just have something to listen to and Rachel Hollis was yelling at me how this post about how it's okay to how it's okay if the only thing you've done today was just to breathe and I was like what a bitch and that sort of put everything together and I think that was the last nail in the coffin that I needed and went and to go it's about time that you take the power back and that if you really want to do this you should do this and you should you should build better memories around things that you really want in your life regardless how tainted they are from your previous experiences and here we are and we finally get to the bloody unboxing and I was really, I was really fidgety, but I wanted to, I wanted to make some sort of sense. And even though I probably said about a fraction of what I wanted to say, um, um, I'm very grateful for continuing to push. I'm very grateful even for the small steps. As I said, I wanted to build better memories around the things that I really, really want in my life. And I went online and here we are. I really wanted the Misty Your perfume and I wanted to just stop being constantly taken back to a situation where I felt like I was I was hurt and I was still reminiscing about something that happened in the past and I and I felt like there's nothing I can do about that. But this this is exactly what I'm doing about that. It wasn't easy because uh, I know it's just a perfume and this was 150 pounds sterling. And I know that's not the biggest price tag, but I, I do recognize that it's a lot of money and it's a lot of money even when it's not post Christmas um, and all the things. But here we are and we're gonna 
open this and we're gonna talk about it and and we're gonna keep pushing so this is the invoice you know what to do no one likes the invoice i have no idea what's in this one and i trust this is the perfume it's really pretty box and we're gonna talk about it but let's start with this one Traditionally, perfume orders come with a sample of the perfume and then some samples that you can select. I think Dior uh, allows you to order two different samples, so we're gonna see what I clicked on because I forgot. Because the perfume houses would normally send you like a tiny, like a tester, so that you can test it and then return the unpacked perfume, unused perfume, if you really realize that, oh, this is actually not for me whatsoever. So, go for it. Alright, what do we have here? We start with a tiny pouch. I love a tiny pouch. I love a big pouch. I love boxes in general. I recognize it's an illness, but I just love boxes. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. Okay, okay. Focus, Linda. Sample or tester number one is the Mistior. This is the new one. Smooth velvet rose, as if embroidered with a thousand shimmering colorful flowers, like an olfactory milfury. It was probably French and I just butchered it. Freshness and sensuality are intertwined to enhance the most couture fragrance by the House of Dior. It's, it's very florally. Like, I'm not sure how to feel about this one, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna try it out and if we like it, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it here on LKT. Sample number two. Listen, I can't help it, okay? This is Dior Sauvage Elixir. I I can't help it, okay? It says the quintessence of Sauvage, an extraordinarily concentrated fragrance, like a fine liqueur made of exceptional ingredients, the emblematic freshness of Sauvage, with an intoxicating heart of spices and a lavender essence tailor-made for Dior. A blend of rich woods forms the signature of its powerful, lavish and captivating trail. My goodness, even the words sound so good. Oh, I can't, oh my goodness. Yeah, I can't. I can't help it. It's, and I feel like Sauvage is one of those that you either love it or hate it. Oh, and I know a few people hating it just because everyone has it. And I am yet to meet a person who has it. This smells so good so good okay we've got two samples tiny pouch Dior currently I think currently has a thing if you order anything over I believe it's 100 pounds sterling or equal you get a gift it's a mirror it's the redesigned CD logo by Maria Grazia Curie. Oh, apologies for my nail. All right, do you want to see? You're there. Look at you. Hi. All right. This is interesting. It's actually kind of cute. I don't, I don't have a mirror in my handbag. I usually don't use a mirror. I'm not sure what for. Like I probably use um, my phone. This is great. All right, so that was pouch with the samples. Uh, back you go. Thank you, thank you for visiting. All right, this red design is Dior's Lunar New Year design. As you can see, I haven't been in yet. So I want, looks like this. So it opens and you get a card. Dior wishes you a happy Chinese New Year, Dior, with the beautiful constellation and a set of envelopes. Could I be more clumsy? Gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so this goes back all right well this was lovely now comes the box a red beautiful box is the lunar new year collection 
yeah just coming back to the story that I was just telling I looked at this and figured this is actually quite a lovely way how to get the perfume and build my own memory around it and I'm hopeful that from now on whenever I you know use the perfume or see it anywhere or we I talk about it I'm always going to remember that time where I got it for myself it came with the with the gifts and with the mirror and in the beautiful Lunar New Year box and whenever I see the box again I love a box um, whenever I see the box just sitting in my room I'm just going to remember yeah that was a great day and that's just gonna be great all right let's open sesame careful okay all right so that's the Miss Dior perfume eau de parfum okay let's do this okay let's get organized perfume the back bottom You can also get this one and have it personalized and you get a different bow here and it can be embroidered with your initials. You go back and let's have a look at the star. Okay, so we have a Dior star. Now if you shop at Dior you get a star very, very similar to this with your purchase. Those of you that have made it to, to my casa uh, over Christmas time, you have seen me put the Dior star on the Christmas tree because I actually um, love it there. And it always reminds me of that first, you know, purchase that I made. And it's just a little something that I put on there. So now we have a star number two that will go up and it's great. I love it. And this little card there says, for this Lunar New Year, Dior invites you on a dreamlike and enchanting journey into a magical and luxurious astral world, astral world created by the artist Pietro Rufo, friend of the House of Dior. Celebrate a flourishing new year of good luck and follow up Dior Lucky Star as a follow your and follow your Dior Lucky Star as it guides you through this dazzling garden and brings happiness for the year to come. Dior. It's gorgeous. This is this is what I just read to you. The star. All right, back you go. I love this.
I'm super happy that I started 2023 20, sort of reflecting rather than, you know, rather than just continuing feeling like, oh, this is just something that I can't change. This is bringing me back to something that I said earlier in my story or whatever this is. Never underestimate the power of joy. I understand we all have different resources and we have different circumstances and different challenges to tackle, but never underestimate the power of joy. And I hope that your 2023 is going to be joyful, joyous, and just all over fantastic and fabulous. And you're going to keep moving forward because you deserve it. I think that was quite enough. Thanks for being here. Thank you for thank you for making it to the very end. I appreciate all of you and I'm wishing you a very happy new year and here's some more. Bye.